event taking place behind me is Sand Detector, involving first year architect and interior architecture students. They are working in teams of five to recreate famous buildings and produce sand sculptures. The students were given a famous architectural building. They were analysing that building and identifying uh, what makes that building unique. So looking at volume, form, um, texture, symmetry and a whole lot of different um, architectural elements. They then took those elements and uh, designed an abstracted form and that form that they are now sculpting out of sand. In preparation they've had a few studio workshops as well as a workshop with Tim Darby from Sand Sculptor WA and he was teaching them various techniques, um, how to sculpt and do the pound up and so on. So that's what the students have been doing for about two weeks. Creation of sand sculpture happens in probably four stages. The first is building of the form. The second is compaction of the sand into the form. Then you have to remove the form from the sand. And then lastly, you carve it. So the first three steps are just building the block and then you actually get to the interesting bit which is carving it away to reveal the uh, architectural masterpiece that dwells within that block of sand. Apart from the design aspect that's dealt with in their workshops, part I'm working through with them involves building the, um, the formwork which is made out of um, ply and sort of 90 by 45 um, timber and I have to nail that together in such a way that um, it can be pulled apart easily later without collapsing the sand that's in it. That jackhammer you can hear in the background is them pounding the sand. So they put in sand in four layers of about 150 mil and each time they put it in they compact it and get the moisture content right. And when that block's full, then they'll pull the nails out and if they've done everything right, the sand will stay there in a really like rigid, hard form. And if it hasn't, then I guess we'll have to do it again, like really quickly. The second part, which is the carving, it's mainly reductive, so you start off with a bigger chunk of sand than you're going to need. But with the sand that they cut away, which we call dross, they can then reconstitute that, put more water in, and build up more details with it. So usually the carving comes in two sections, of the block out, which you do with a big trowel, and then the detail or the texture, which you do with little fiddly trowels or toothpicks or you know, whatever you've got lying around that you can use. And the challenges for the students, I feel, are um, overcoming the fears of first year um, in, in general, basically. So their first design studio, they were out here on the grass getting to know each other, interacting, and I think that that can be quite confronting. And it's great to see that they've come such a long way in just the past two weeks. They're, you know, pretty much all best friends working together and uh, designing together, which is a really important um, quality. The hardest thing for these guys is actually just that it's a manual skill. It's like old school pallet knives and hammers and they're working in, a, in an industry which is all about computers and images. So I think that's going to be the most difficult thing for them is making that transfer from just a completely different way of thinking really. The building we've chosen is the Sydney Opera House. Um, and we've incorporated the form of the sails into our building um, and we've also added the textures and we've mixed them um, each sail to different textures so we can create like a regularity. Well we had about like 10 different designs and we just took elements from each one and then we just sort of had like a uh, like a mind map between us all and we just took elements, elements from each of our ideas and then we just got with this sort of idea of broken up parts but are still joined together. The building that we were given was the CCTV um, headquarters in Beijing um, and basically it's it's a really strange, hard to explain kind of building um, but the main element of it is that it kind of twists around but right in the middle there's this huge void and there's like no building in there at all. Um, so basically we tried to take that element of the void and put it into our sand sculpture so that um, when you're looking from the front and you look down you can see straight through all the sets of the sculptures. I think just because we've chosen a design that has quite clean edges it can be quite difficult to, uh, to keep them together. Pounding in the full 33 degree heat was a bit of a struggle to say the least but um, <laughs> it took a couple of hours you know a lot of sweat, um, a lot of sweat, yeah. <laughs>
I think it's very different. Um, I didn't expect it to be as different as other people's, um, but everyone's been saying that it's very original um, and sort of unique. Australian. Yeah, yeah, very Australian. And people have actually been like, oh, is that Sydney Opera House? And we're like, yes. And so we know we did something right because people actually have guessed our um, original building right. Architecture has been a fantastic kickstart um, for these first year students into you know, the world of design and the world of both architecture and interior architecture. The skills that they've been developing in you know, concept, design, model making are skills that will be beneficial for the next four or five years of their degree.